My name is Zizrin, and I am joined here with Sam and Ed from the animation team. And uh, that's what we're going to be asking about today. And these are the people that make all the animation look amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks very much for having us. This Thanks. is great. Well, I mean, you have an us. Awesome, I'm not too sure which way around it goes. Both. Bit of both. <laughs> um, I figured we could do like a quick introduction with how long you've been working at Grinding Gear Games and how much you've been working on PoE 1 versus PoE 2. Sure, I, I've been here for about seven and a half years. Um, you know, we started just before Fall of Orieth, and uh, uh, we've sort of been here ever since, and sort of really started to put our feet down. You know, bit of the furniture. You, he's been here even longer. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I've been here eight years. I started, I think, the the week of release for uh, Act Four was. Yeah, so I started a pretty hectic time. Wow. Um, yeah. And, Certainly, a lot of work that's gone in before uh, since then. Yeah, you know, uh, there was a small period where I was the single animator. Wow. Yeah, yeah. and that's then, a lot to do. Yeah, yeah. There was two guys when I started, and then they both left, leaving me behind. And I was just like this junior, being like, "How do I do this?" A lot of <laughs> a lot of overtime then. Yeah. And uh, so, how much have you been working on Pee Wee One versus Pee Wee Two now that like both are being worked on? Uh, well, I'm full time Pee Wee Two now. Mm -hmm. um, there was a bit of like crossover, but yeah, now it's just just strictly Poto. Yeah, and so for myself, it's just sort of like I have a combination of all of it, really. Um, I take care of all the bosses and monsters in PoE 2, but obviously we have a lot of content in PoE 1, which is still needing to be maintained, and we have a lot of microtransactions and that kind of stuff that also needs maintained. So, um, you know, it's sort of, you know, split across all, really. That makes sense. Yeah. So, Sam, what's the favorite thing you've, like, designed so far? Oh, I don't know, man. There's a lot of content to go through, but I have to say creating the POE2 bosses has been my absolute favorite. Um, we've had a chance to create you know, much more character and all of the monster uh, performances from all of them. Um, we've really tried to, to really hone in on who a character is, where he comes from, you know, where does his magic come from, how is it created, is it, you know, is it from the gods, is it from the earth, is it from his catalyst? You know, it doesn't matter where it's from, you know, but we have to know that. And, and I think people really start to get the idea after seeing some of the boss fights that they're or experiencing some of the boss fights that they're not just quite so vanilla. You yeah. Know? Um, you know, and it's really important that uh, the bosses feel unique. Um, I mean, we have over 100 or about 100 bosses, and so you know, each and every one needs to be its own thing. Um, the monsters are a different category on their own. Well, Ed, what about you? Uh, I mean, I've just been on characters this whole time. Um, yeah, just trying to make sure that they feel punchy and flow and, yeah. Uh, I think my favorite at the moment is the monk, um, but also the warrior. I like the slams. Yep. Yeah. And you were telling me for uh, for PoE one, you designed like pretty much all the animations on Katava. Yeah. Yep. I was all on Katava. Um, that took me about three months That's to crazy. animate. Uh, he was crazy complicated. Um, yeah. Yeah. And at the time, it was something that was completely unique. I I had never animated something the size of a building. Yeah, before. yeah. Um, and that took a long time to wrap my head around, like just how fast that thing should move or how slow it should move. And yeah, there was a lot of iteration that went on trying to get him feeling right. I can't even imagine. It, so walk us through the process a little bit. Like, where do you start? Do you get an outline of everything? I'm guessing like the model is mostly finished when you start doing the animations. Can you walk us through that? I mean, sometimes it's actually all the way back, and actually more often, it's actually all the way back at concept stage. Wow. Um, so the drawings come in, and, and you, you get to see them, and you're like, uh, it's really, really messy at the top or down the bottom, and we're just like, can we balance this out a little bit here? And it's sort of like, this would be the biggest shape that we want to make use of. But our concept team over the years have just gotten so good. You know, they understand what the product is. You know, we obviously have, you know, a top-down camera. Um, which is quite difficult um, at yeah. times to animate to. Um, the silhouette gets foreshortened all the way down, and so actually that's sometimes our biggest battle is making sure that silhouettes are clean and, and that kind of stuff. And the, the concept artists are so good at doing that. But at the same time, you know, the monsters are crazy these days. The level of detail on them is crazy. So you know, there's only so much limitation that you can have. But at, after that, then it goes to modeling and stuff, and we'll, 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 we'll get at that stage. We'll they, they can often be this balance of like, uh, Sometimes uh, the craziness of a monster, it's like, well, that's going to make it difficult to animate, but I also don't want to ruin what makes this yeah. monster special, you know? 100%. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. 
Wow, and like animation has been going on for a long time in PUE right now, and you've been working there for so long. Can you tell me a little bit about how things have changed from all the way seven years ago, and uh, like technology will change all and changes and stuff like that today? Well, I think it touched a little bit on it in his talk yesterday, which was quite funny. Is it's like the rigs for the character side of things was a yeah. huge change um, that made a massive difference. Yeah. Um, you know, on the bosses side and on the monsters side, it was just more about. It's trying to, again, just trying to make the bosses or the monsters feel like who they are. And so we're really trying to up the character and, you know, make them feel like they're, um, if they're a zombie and they're sort of like, ah, coming after you, or, you know, if they're a big and tough person, you know, they feel that way. Um, a lot of that for me, I really concentrate the most, probably the most important thing for me that I start with is the walk or the yeah. run. Uh, once you've established how this thing moves, it really helps you sort of gauge how fast something should attack after that, how crazy it is, is it manic, is it slow and heavy, um, you know, it, you know are, they, are they proud and, 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 and standing tall? Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it's balancing it all over the place, really. I think uh, also on the tech side of things, um, when I started, we didn't have a rigging department. Uh, the animators were doing the rigging. Wow. And I, I didn't know how to rig, um, so I was kind of <laughs> learning on the fly. Um, but yeah, now we have very talented riggers who can support us with extra things behind the scenes that make our job a lot easier. So what, uh, what does the rigging do? Uh, the rigging is adding in all of the, it's basically adding the skeleton, uh, all the point, defining the points of defam deformation around joints and also adding controls, so the, the things that we can actually select. Um, so in my talk yesterday I mentioned that we were animating on the skeleton. The problem with that is that the skeleton's underneath the skin. So you would either have to have the character in some kind of transparent mode, so you can't really see them properly, or yeah, yeah, have a, an X-ray. Yeah, there's right. a whole bunch of stuff. That... Sometimes they also create little systems for us. Um, so like if you've got a lot of controls, they may give us a global controller that might be able to, instead of having to on, a, on an extremely high level control every single control, we might have a lower level control that we can control all of that with. So we only yeah. actually have to animate one thing, or they make systems for us and that kind of stuff. Like we able to throw uh, sine waves through things to be able to give the overlapping wow. actions and stuff like that. So. So, especially with character models and stuff, do you ever use like real life people to have them like wear suits to try to make sure everything looks super authentic, or is it just all done in a program? We sometimes will be video ourselves. Yeah, reference is huge. Huge. <laughs> reference is huge. Um, yeah. and, and in fact, I think that's probably one of the biggest changes that we've had from POE 1 to POE 2. Um, with most of the guys, um, you know, from the monster side of things, uh, we take them, we go into the uh, animation room, we make lots of like weird noises and growls and you know, smash stuff, break swords. Um, we have a lot of uh, temporary, uh, temporary swords, which is hardened plastic and that kind mm. of stuff. Um, so you can actually stand in pose, look at your body, uh, take, take video of it, and then you can be like, oh, really, he does that? Um, like one of the things that I, we re I remember figuring out actually at the last, just before the last XLCon was when someone's sliding uh, their, their sword around, you may think that it's actually going to go straight through and it just cuts straight through. It's front, you know, generally we have you know, a pose here and a pose here and then we jump, jump, jump through, but there's a point where the weight actually from the, from the blade goes through to the end of the sword and it travels down, down to the end of the, and it actually keeps you while it rotates for a still frame in the middle and then it continues on. And it actually gives you that sensation of, of sort of the weight actually going through um, and it gives it a little bit of extra chunk, but you'd never figure that out. If you just looked at it just normally, you'd never almost know that it's there. Wow. But you take video footage of it and all of a sudden you've got levels of detail that you didn't think were, you know, were, were present. Yeah, because I'd imagine animation is something you really notice, like you ideally don't notice if it's done well, right? It just feels good, it feels right, but you really notice when it's done wrong. What would be like the single hardest thing to animate? Um, I find very subtle things hard to animate. Yeah. Um, like big flippy actions are great because there's so much going on. High contrast. Yeah, you can't you can't tell <laughs> when something's gone wrong. Yeah, like I, I, sorry. just quickly, uh, what, one of the animations I did on Po Two was recently was. Uh, plugging a gem into a generator and the character kneels down and plugs the thing up and then stands up. Doing the, the stand-up, I was just like, how, how does this happen? How, how, yeah. do, you, how do you stand <laughs> up and have a kneel? <laughs> I think uh, another thing for me is like really human-based walks. Um, yeah. mm. They're slow. Um, if they, everyone knows how a human moves, whether they know they do or they don't. Um, they, everyone has observed everyone their entire lives and as soon as something's not exactly right, they're like, that's wrong. Yeah. They're like, why'd you do that? That's wrong. And it's like, oh, I, I tried. <laughs> we don't use any motion capture. You know, wow. ev every single thing that's in the game, ah, maybe there is 
0.5% of something that has been motion captured. We've tried a few different you know, technologies over the years and stuff, and we've always reverted back to acting yeah. and hand creating and handcrafting everything. Um, so there is absolutely nothing that, you know, every boss and monster that we have at the moment, it's, it's just all, all, all from hand and reference. That's very impressive, because you've like, seen such a like, level up in all the animations and everything. Like, everything looks so much more smooth, oh. realistic, <laughs> uh, running oh. and everything. Because you're pulling my strings, man. Very, very well done. <laughs> uh, what I want to ask you about next is animation. Animation counseling is a really big thing in Path of Exile. Mm. And I really want to wonder, especially now that we're having things like a incorporated dodge roll, how does that work if you're like mid-swing and your player wants to do like animation cancel, does that make your job a lot harder? So far, no. Uh, that was one of the things that I was worried about when it was first mentioned to me. Um, but seeing it in game and testing it out for myself, it, it, it's just kind of worked. Uh, which has been a relief. Um, we do have some level of control over it, um, so if there are instances where it does end up looking ridiculous, then we can stop that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so far it's been fine. On, on the monster side of things, we sometimes have um, very fast characters um, or slow characters. And the slow character is a little bit easier because you don't really, you kind of want them to hit the ground and wait, and you kind of got that telegraph and timing when you know when you can attack them again. But if you have like a multiple at attack animation, maybe they slash you know, once across and then come back again or something, you might not want to actually make that want monster wait until he's finished a second attack. And so we can actually put animation canceling events in the timeline, oh. and we can say, look, you've got to be here until this moment, but if the character is no longer in proximity at this point, actually you can go and chase him again. And so oh. that, keeps, uh, that keeps a mob really hungry and sort of fiending after you, and you know, especially with the fast-paced stuff. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about next. Obviously in Path of X, a lot of people like to stack both attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed. How does that like, interact with the animations you have to make? Do you just speed everything up with like, a linear timeline, or do you have to make different animations for different thresholds? Yeah, so the, the characters have the ability to um, now to switch animations as their attack speed increases. Um, basically, I just try and find a threshold where the animation starts looking ridiculous, and then I have another one where uh, usually I cut a bit off the head and tail, so that the actual slash itself stays the same. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's awesome. And obviously, there's a lot of teams that running your games. I, I imagine you guys have to work very closely with like, sound, visual effects. Can you talk a little bit about what, like, how does it work to collaborate with other teams, like a back and forth, and if things need to be changed afterwards? I think that's probably my favorite part of the whole job. You get to talk with everyone. You know, uh, Everything in the whole pipeline, it's very linear. Um, first of all, you have the concept stage, and then you have modeling, and then you have rigging, you've got animation, you've got VFX, and then you've got audio. And it's all one big collaborative um, thing. So uh, quite often, because it's linear, um, we come in, we will do a pass, we'll maybe get it up to about 80% somewhere, we hope, around about 80%. We then send it off to a VFX, they'll do it, and then um, you know, sometimes they'll come back and they'll be like, hey, you know, I was really trying to make this lightning ball up, and then I wanted to explode at a certain time. Can you give me just like half a second more? Um, just so that they can form the effect. And, you know, and then we'll go back and adjust it for them, and then they can do their effects to it. Um, audio, you know, they're at the end of the pipeline. Yeah. Um, you know, so you know, they, they kind of just wait and pause. They might put some sort of dummy stuff in, and they'll just wait until we're completely polished, and, and then they'll do their pass afterwards. But it's really cool to like make an action and then pass it on and just kind of see what another artist does with it. You know? yeah. Just yeah, it's like, like different sets of the puzzle, right? It's very cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and sometimes you just don't expect what they do. Yeah. You know? You're um, just like, oh, I, I didn't intend for that, but cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, look, that makes That's, it look way better. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, so with like, cohesion between like, skills and microtransactions, does that, like, how much things does the actual look of something factor into the animation? In terms of microtransactions? And like skins in general. Right. I mean, like sometimes I think we're kind of bound um, with microtransactions specifically because um, we don't really create the microtransaction itself may have a unique animation, but it's usually getting played on top of something which isn't unique. Um, and so we don't really go ahead and create new character animations for those microtransactions, especially in PO1. Yeah. Um, I can't really tell you what's going to happen in PO2, but in PO1 we have a, you know, a predefined, um, you know, we have the, the characters there, they have certain rigs. Because they didn't share at that particular point in time, it made it very difficult to go and customize anything. Mm -hmm. Whereas we have a lot more options, I feel like, coming up in PO2, where yeah. you know, we actually could potentially do some certain things. And, you know, Although there was the exception of what was it, there was a supporter pack or something recently where there was the armor set that when you got it, you'd floated. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. That, that was yeah. probably like 
the first thing we've added to the characters yeah. in, in ages. That's, that's, cool. that's my favorite thing. I wish you could have that on just like, like once you've unlocked that MTX, I wish you could have it on everything. I love floating. It's so cool. <laughs> well, we added it uh, to the, the Mana Tempest on the um, Inpo 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, It'll look so cool. Little... And uh, we, we got a 10 minute warning here, and I've, I've been asked kindly to remind everybody that we have a PoE2 gameplay showcase with Anugi and Mark, which some of you know as Neon. So that'll be coming up after our segment here. Um, but as a next one, I wanted to ask, do you have any pet peeves when it comes to animating? Like something that like comes up that like, bugs you, annoys you, that's like maybe a mm. hard thing to solve? Um, I don't know if it's pet peeves in the like overall animation itself, or maybe just the process and making sure that the, the workflow um, is correct, um, making sure that animation isn't too noisy, I guess. Like pet, I don't know if it's more of a pet peeve, it's just something that we really concentrate on. Um, yeah. I the only thing that really comes to mind is being asked to do something quicker than it can possibly be done. Oh, uh, Timing-wise? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, we want this big epic thing to happen and we want it in half a second. It's like, well... Yeah. <laughs> Takes time. It's definitely yeah. one of the most difficult things in Poe is that everything is so fast. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, you don't get a lot of time to, to create this massive thing. You have to try and get that feeling across, but in a really tiny period of time. It's just, but that's part of the territory. It's not really, a, I don't know if I'd call it a peeve. But. Yeah, that makes sense. And that brings me to my next question about visual clarity. It's obviously super important in ARPGs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to really ask you about the differences in PoE 1 versus PoE 2 there. And yeah, how does visual clarity factor into everything? I mean, for, for me with monsters, um, it's just making sure that the animations are clean, like really clean. Uh, the flow is really important. Um, you can't have something that's uh, just going to run really fast and then attack really slow. Um, yeah. you, you, you can't have animations that are coming this way and then suddenly just bounce out and go the opposite way. Um, rather than matching a particular pose, uh, which we often do with bosses and with monsters, it's more about matching the flow of something, um, especially with like wings and things like that. They have a certain action that they're doing. If you suddenly just change that and go the opposite way, it's going to pop. Even if the pose is exactly the same, the flow of the motion is too different um, and you'll get a knock. And then when people are seeing it, they won't know what they're doing, but they'll feel it. They'll feel this mm -hmm. and, and it will become that when you've got packs and packs of monsters, it's like click, 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 click all over the screen, you know? Yeah. And you're just like, no, 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 what's going on there? That's wrong. Yeah. You know, that's bad. Yeah. Uh, reducing visual noise is a, yeah, a big thing I focus on. Uh, when I'm making character skills, I'll often just run around an area and just kill lots of monsters with that skill and just make sure that I'm seeing it from all different angles and just trying to catch any like weird, yeah, weird little pops and, yeah. and also using it alongside other abilities as well. Um, so it's, it, I'm not just focusing on it being spammed, but also how does it work with everything else in your toolkit. Awesome. And obviously bosses are particularly important to be telegraphed. And when you're designing the animations for a boss, are you just given a list of like, these are the moves that we need? Like we need one slam or two slams and like that's that. A, that's a really interesting question. So that, that kind of kind of happens in many different ways. Sometimes we have a design to begin with. Um, mm. We're like, oh, we really need this to happen. It needs to have circle, circle, rectangle damage. Um, or, you know, maybe other times they'll just get a boss and we have a look at it and we have a look at the biggest shapes that it has, what kind of character it is and be like, okay, well, he's got a massive axe. It would be an obvious thing. So we really need to make sure that we're, we're um, emphasizing on this. Um, but, you know, other times it may be just choosing a different part or making sure that the lore of the magic or whatever is coming through. Yeah. And do you ever get given a boss and you see it and you're like, I want this boss to do this. Like, this would be a really cool move to put in. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. And what about, um, do you ever have, a, like, does it happen often that you have an animation, you've, like, finished it and you're like, no, it's just not right and you just scrap it entirely? Yep. <laughs> uh, a, big, a big part of my process is uh, if something's not working, just don't try and uh, force it to be good. Um, a lot of the times it's good just to delete, yeah, it. delete it and start again. Yep. Yeah, rework it, you know, like from, from scratch. Yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with throwing away stuff that's not working. Um, and in fact, I implore it for, for all of our animators. It's like, because the, the clarity when you're creating an animation from scratch is either there or it's not. Um, and you may just fundamentally have that animation just not working. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And there might be a lot of people watching at home, on Twitch, et cetera, and that want to do what you guys do. What would be your advice and like things to study in university for people that are still students, et cetera? 
Well, I think for me, before university or anything else, is observe. Just observe people, observe life, observe animals, observe nature, observe everything, and just absorb as much as you can because that's the stuff that you're drawing on when you're creating something. You know, um, you know, Ed, you know, he's uh, done a, got a little bit of history in martial arts and stuff like that, and obviously that comes through in a lot of his animation. Um, for me, I just I, I, I'm generally in the world, uh, whether it be in, in nature or you know, living a much more physical life. Yeah. Um, and I take that and I bring that back into the animation. Wow. On top of that, obviously, you've got schooling. Um, yeah. There's loads of schools online, um, you know, it, locally to the uh, to whoever it is around the world. Um, that's obviously important. Um, and I'd say the last thing is just don't give up. You know, it's you're not going to be great straight away. Um, yeah. well, you know, but I would say just animate. Yeah, just animate a lot. Mm. Um, I mean, uh, con uh, artists will do the same thing with drawing. Like, just draw a lot. It's the same thing. Animate, just animate, animate a lot. Yeah, um, and get critique. Get other people yeah. to look at your work. Very much so. That's the most important. And, and I mean, even at a professional level, that's the same thing. You know, yeah. like you can create an animation. I can come up to Ed and I'm like, Ed, help me. What's wrong? You know, and he's just like, oh, it's this. And it's like, oh, what? Oh, it's that? Oh, okay. You know, and you just need points of reference. And, you know, don't, don't have anything and hold it too, too close to your heart. You know, it's like if someone says it's wrong, you know, my, I, I generally run by the rule of threes. Ask three people. If two people say that it's wrong, you know what? No matter what your pride is, it's probably wrong. You know, and, and then just redo it. You know, and, and, and don't worry about it. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect first time. And how much of this is like solo work and how often do you end up working with like two people in one animation or more people? Well, Ed's been solo <laughs> on characters for the entirety of uh, uh, POE2 production. Wow. Um, for us, we started off with having everyone um, owning a monster and owning a boss and that kind of stuff. But as production kind of goes on and, and, and the schedules are what they are, um, you actually kind of need to sometimes break people down into teams of two. Mm -hmm. And so they'll work together on something and they can actually collaborate together. And, and, and you know, someone might take the walk and this attack and then somebody else might take you know, a special attack or something like that. And it, it's actually kind of cool to be able to, to, to collaborate like that because you, you, you share ideas and you both understand the same product and so then you end up with something that's actually better than what it ever would have been with just one person. That's um, awesome. How often do you go back and rework something that's been in the game for a while, like maybe a new technolo technology came out and you know that you can upgrade something or is it like hard to go back? Um, I think it's, it, it's quite rare to go back. Yeah. I think I think the only th time we've gone back and really changed stuff is when we started adding uh, physics to armor. Yeah, mm. and we started having problems with that. I think it's really important to learn as you're going. I mean, like we constantly evolving on the, on the learning side. It's, it's, it's quite expensive to go back and to rework everything, but you're learning from those mistakes. The next time you go around it, and you're, you're really concentrating on making sure that you don't make that same mistake again. Well, we're getting towards the end here, but this must have been a huge relief getting everything off your chest. Like, what's the general vibe of just seeing everyone? It's awesome. How they're reacting to everything? It, it's like it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, the fans that have come in all this way to come out and see here, you know, I get goosebumps thinking about people. People say that they appreciate something. You're like, oh, you noticed that? That's amazing. You know, it's like sometimes you just don't really know if people are picking up what you're putting down, and that's like. Oh, it's a huge sigh of relief to actually see that people do appreciate the effort that you put in because it's definitely a product of passion. Yeah. Um, we absolutely love what we do. Um, we're very lucky. My, the whole team of animators are extremely talented and it's a truly a privilege to get to work with them on it and then to get to appreciate it from everyone else is just, it's awesome. I mean, usually the, the stuff we see online is like about, you know, that, how the game plays and the... Uh, I don't know, I guess more game mechanic re uh, relevant stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it's nice to have people come up and actually say they appreciate the animations and yeah, I mean, I, I compliment think that stuff. People are quite often quite willing to turn around and tell you what's wrong with something. Um, but to how you have so many people come over and tell you what's right with something, it's just like, oh, sweet, they did get it. You know, like. <laughs> yeah, is there anything small that you feel gets like overlooked that you are really proud of? Um, I, I think, um, we were talking earlier with Ed, you know, and I think he hit the note quite on. It's just sort of like, we've tried so hard in POE 1 specifically, um, you know, they, animation quality has been getting better and better, and, um, but the people sort of sort of have this thing, it's like, oh, things look a bit janky, so I'm not really looking at animation. Um, but I think a lot of the stuff that's there is actually a lot, you know, is, is really good. Um, but, you know, there's some stuff that's dated that we sort of gets mixed and blurs yeah. in with it, you know. 
Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me here. Thank you, Sam and Ed, and everybody watching. Really appreciate it. Friday Year Games for setting everything up. And remember, right up next, we have the PUE2 Gameplay Showcase with Nguyen and Mark, which some of you know as Neon. So thanks so much. Hope you guys all enjoyed watching. And uh, yeah, I, my name is Cizrin, and try to die less than I do. Thanks so much. Thanks, Cizrin. Thank you. Thank you.